It is chilly and we're in Kansas. <laughs> Hit three miles. Both of my feet are asleep. My lungs are screaming and I'm never eating ice cream again. But we found a guy in Wilson, Kansas who owns a decommissioned missile silo. It's a little sketchy. It's just exactly probably what you're thinking. We are camping on a stranger's property and there's a missile silo that we're gonna go inside. Got the, the outside tour, waiting on some other folks to show up. And uh, then we'll tour the inside of the missile silo. Anybody come? Yeah. Sweet. No. My lights are on. What's up, friend? Welcome to our camping adventure. We're MK and TJ, and we're on a mission to tent camp in all 50 U.S. states. When we got married in May of 2019, we went on the most fun honeymoon in St. Lucia. After coming home, we realized that we took very few pictures and videos, so we really have nothing to look back on to remember the trip. This made us commit to capturing our family adventures from here on out. While we had plans and high hopes for more international travel over the next couple of years, 2020 quickly changed our plans. However, we are beyond excited to adventure around our home country and really get to know these 50 states. We are thankful you're here and we invite you to subscribe and join our journey. here everyone who entered was stopped in this room where they had to pick up a phone and give a code before being allowed through the second door. After this we walked through a series of blast doors. This system of doors and walls was built to help the silo and control center withstand a nuclear blast. Next we came to the first story of the launch control center. Matthew showed us a map of the layout of the silo as well as his plans for converting the control center to his home while converting the silo into a 15-story steam slash future astronaut training center and tourist attraction. The electronics and computers were taken out of the launch control center desk, but it was still very neat to see the actual desk still in the control center. We also learned that the punching bags are here because Matthew competed on American Ninja Warrior, which is really cool. After seeing the launch control center, we walked through a large tunnel to the silo. The silo itself is 176 feet deep and 52 feet wide. It is filled partway with water to keep the pressure on the walls and possibly to act as a safety net in the event that someone were to fall in. But here you can take a look in and go, hello! What? <laughs> yeah, stick your head in there, take a look up, you'll see the blast doors that we were standing on and stalactites. Take a look down, you'll see all the water that's down there. That is like kind of freaky, but it's <laughs> so cool at the same time. Uh -huh. After Matthew bought the silo, he put up these boards to prevent people falling into the silo. At the time of our tour, the final blast door was still sealed. However, since our tour, Matthew has opened it as he continues renovations on the project. Check out the Missile Silo Ninja on Instagram to keep up with his progress. What'd you think? That was so cool. Yeah. Like, that... I don't even know how to describe it. That I will never experience something like that again. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. We're picking out our where we're gonna put our tent for the night, and uh, this is gonna be our view. It's the uh, Kansas skyline all the way around. I mean, I don't want to camp like too far from the bathroom. Why not? Because I don't want to walk through the dark by myself to go to the bathroom. Afraid an animal will get you? Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> the absolute scariest thing about camping is animals yeah the wild opinion. animals yeah you never know like some places they're like 
some times of the year there's animals super active and other times they're not but then animals do weird things and they come out when they're not expected and it's scary I didn't make it. You got to throw it harder than that. Just for the record, Mary Catherine was really quick to tell me what I was doing wrong. Well, <clears throat> well I don't know how to fix it, so I'll probably do the same thing. No, we'll do it. Mm. I'm just saying. <laughs> What? <laughs> that was awesome! I can't believe you're the first one to get it. <laughs> that was so cool. It's the two hands kind of thing. It gets more All right. direct. I think this is rigged. Don't throw it too close. It'll come back and bounce at you. <laughs> it's rigged. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. As soon as she stopped recording, I threw that sucker right there he and really it stuck. Did. He really did. I promise he threw it. He didn't hammer it in there. True I'm so story. sorry. I you did missed not. The only axe that I stuck. I'm a bad script. videographer. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I, I love you. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, TJ just won. What was the score? 27 to 3. What was the score next? Oh, wait. No, it was just 24 to 3. Actually, it was 1 to 1, but I was the first one to score. So I'm basically winning the Olympics here. <laughs> Want to play washers? I don't know how to play washers. Neither do I, but I'm sure we can make it up. After dinner, we ended our day with a campfire that our host Matthew put on for the campers. We had a great time getting to know other campers and hearing stories about this property. We had to get up early the next day to head to Hutchinson, but Matthew's place was absolutely perfect for camping. If you're passing through Kansas, we highly recommend staying here. We made it to Hutchinson, Kansas. Mary Catherine, 
tell them why this is significant. Okay, so here in Hutchinson is the Kansas State Fairgrounds, and there's a little piece of Kansas history here, which also happens to be a little piece of my family history. So, my great uncle, JB, is better known as Bardo the Clown, and he was the clown of the Kansas State Fair for over 60 years, and he has a lot of artwork that's featured here somewhere on these fairgrounds is his workshop. He passed away a few years ago, so we will not be seeing him today, but they still feature his artwork all over. He's also featured in several clown museums across the country, and he did artwork and worked with the Arizona State Fair many decades ago as well. But he's more famous for the Kansas State Fair. So we're gonna go see if we can find some of his artwork. We have no idea where we're going. No idea. The lady's directions, I talked to someone on the phone the other day and her directions um, were that there's work by Gottschalk Park and the Livestock Annex. And we're at the Livestock Annex and there's no artwork. We walked all the way around it and inside it and didn't see anything. It's real confusing. They said they've taken almost all of his work down to preserve it, but there was still some things up in Anyway, the park's up here, so maybe we'll find something up here. Yeah, so we think we found what might be some Bardo paintings. We're not sure. If you're watching this and you get to see them, that means we've confirmed it. <laughs> Otherwise, you won't see this part of the vlog. <laughs> but here they are. maintenance building because Bardo's workshop is in this maintenance building and uh, it doesn't look like anybody's here to let us in so we probably aren't gonna get to see that any luck it's dark and locked all right so no Bardo's workshop for us but at least we got to see some of his paintings yeah it's pretty cool yeah I think it's so cool just to see like the talent and how around here really appreciated it and it was really important yeah all right on to Dodge City there's absolutely no way to keep the camera steady while we're driving right now the wind is unexplainable <laughs> The car, like, it's so hard to just keep it straight. I mean, like, my hands are firm on this steering wheel, <laughs> and like, just when I feel like I'm in control, a huge gust of wind like pushes us over, and it's terrifying when the cattle trucks go by. Yeah. Just a second ago, there was a bunch of grass just like being blown all over the road. Which makes sense because as you can see, it's just flat for miles and miles and miles. So, all right, we're about to pass an 18 wheeler. I, I don't think it's a cattle truck, but it'll still have an impact on this vehicle. Oh my gosh, whoa! <laughs> the stuff blowing across the road while we drive. seen anything like this when you look out on this field 
you see little black and brown dots some of them are white and you, it almost looks like like little buildings because they're pretty far away but we got out and realized it, they're all cows just as far as you can see This engine was built in 1903 by Baldwin Locomotive Work at a cost of $19,846.98. Specifications include a boiler pressure of 200 pounds per square inch, heating surface of 2,864 square feet, water capacity of 8,500 gallons, and an oil capacity of 3,300 gallons. It weighs 305,000 200 pounds and has traveled approximately 1 million miles. On July 7, 1954, the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railway Company donated the engine with the coal car and tender to Boot Hill Museum. E.R. Kemper moved the engine on tracks 10 blocks to where the Great Western Hotel replica now stands. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I don't know if I'd want to go very far on this metal chair there I feel like that wouldn't be comfortable hey go stand by that wheel so we can get a an accurate depiction I'm five foot five okay it's a massive wheel like are you calling me massive oh my gosh what is that stop I don't like that <laughs> So on Google, it said that there's gonna be a shootout at noon, and we went to the museum and there was nobody there. Uh, we think it's because of COVID. So I was really pumped to see a shootout in Dodge City. So I guess we're just gonna have to have our own. Me and a complete stranger. Mary Catherine just texted me and said, you're gonna to wanna to have the camera ready when I come back, bathroom review. So I don't know what that means, but we will find out soon. Here she comes. The compost toilet last night was cleaner than the bathroom. Oh, wow. All right, we got our sandwiches. We've seen Dodge City. Now there's only one thing left to do. Let's get the heck out of Dodge. See you in the next state. So southern. <laughs> that was We're the point. Kansas, you know? That was the point. Go TJ, go. You got it, you're so strong. I like your muscles. Thanks. <laughs> oh, I'm shaking the camera. TJ's making sure that we didn't leave anything. Oh, I'm still shaking the camera. What is going on? That's what we've all thought about 2020. Mumbo! Gonna make us some sandwiches for lunch. camera in the car is hard but okay you'll have to cut some of this whoa that's gonna be shaky I'm take a break for a second my arms are tired <laughs> you want me to finish the story yeah okay so <laughs> well I didn't know if you wanted to like do a voiceover or something after we find somewhere to pee and change okay all right Ready? Can you see me all right? Yep. Okay. You're not being very nice to me this morning. Neither are you. You're not being very nice to me. Driving this here train. Got my thing full of coal behind me. Here we go. Let's see. I think you gotta pull this thing. Maybe not.
I can turn this, these handles. No? Well, what about that gasket? I wonder what that does. I don't know. Where's the horn in this thing? Four foot four, no severe and L exterior del train. All right. <laughs>